But we do know that we want to be obedient yes, to our Lord and yes, Savior Jesus Christ. Yes. It is not about the quantity, but it's about the quality. Yeah. And I want to say the quality of the worship tonight is already on fire.
we thank uh, Deacon Chair, Deacon Mokoro for that scripture, and uh, Deacon Harris for that prayer. It is just a blessing to know that you have people who are ready and available when you are in need. You all know I will do everything all by myself if I have to. But we come to worship on tonight. We want to work well, welcome those of you who are joining us via Facebook and those of you who may uh, be looking at this service again via YouTube once it is posted. We thank you for joining us. We thank you for being a part of this worship experience. This is, as I was even praying, our first millennial service. We've been titled and occupied for the Master. It is our church theme this year that we will occupy as Christian servants. And to occupy means that you don't just sit back waiting for something to happen. You don't just sit back waiting to be told what to do. You get up, you go out, and you work. These are the last days. If you haven't realized it now, then somebody needs to wake you up. These are, we're living in the last days. These are perilous times. But it doesn't mean that it's going to end tomorrow. It doesn't mean that it's going to end next week. It just means that we ought to be ready for Jesus when he returns. And we have to be ready in our spirit. So we want God to catch us worshiping and praising him and glorifying him. So someone would say to me, one of my preachers, And I said to him, I said, it's to make us aware. We need to understand that if you go back and you check the Pew research about uh, Christendom in America and what's happening, the millennial age has been leaving the church in masses. We've been losing many of our millennials. Millennials really identified as ages 18, 19, all the way to 39. And that group has been missing from our church. So God laid upon our heart that we will take this time to have millennial preachers come in, millennial musicians come in. I told my musician he doesn't even have to get involved. He's here working on a sound. We thank God that he showed up to do that. And we just want to sit back and hear a word from the Lord out of a young voice. Yes.
somebody wants to have a prayer that they need on their heart after this preacher comes and brings us this message. He comes to us by way of his dad, who is my good, good, good friend. His dad is the moderator of the New Hope Association. We know him as Pastor Jeff Bryant, but this young man is Minister Jeffrey A. Bryant. He's the product of the Hackensack public school system where he was a student athlete and led in both football and wrestling. He is a current student at Felicia University in New Jersey where he is a double major studying Christian, Chris, criminal justice and social and behavioral science. At the age of six, Jeffrey accepted Christ in his as his personal savior. On July 11, 2021, he was licensed to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ by the Bethlehem Missionary Baptist Church in Roselle, New Jersey, where his father, Reverend Jeffrey Bryant, serves as the pastor. Jeffrey has had various opportunities to share the gospel at several churches in Hackensack, Newark, Roselle, and has even traveled to Troy, New York, to be the guest speaker for Youth Sunday. Jeffrey was a member of the Bethlehem Missionary Baptist Church in Roselle, where he led the Impact Ministry. He is now a member of Community Baptist Church in Inglewood, where he is serving in the youth department. He is, the, he is again, the son of our New Hope Missionary Baptist Association moderator, Jeffrey Bryan. Jeffrey's faith confession is Philippians 4 and 13. I love that. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I want you to know this young man is 22 years old. So there is a word from the Lord. Anybody ready for a word from the Lord?
posts and some motivational stuff. People post all kinds of stuff. People post about how much money they got. People post about the latest shrimp or the latest pair of sneakers that they added to their closet. People post about the new set of wheels that God has blessed them with. And I'm not hating on that. All of that's fine and dandy. All of that's great. When God is blessing you like that, then fine. But wouldn't it be more beneficial if we use our social media platforms and other platforms that God has given to us to not only promote what he's doing for ourselves personally, but to encourage and uplift someone who may be watching us or following us. Right, yes. right. Because truth be told in fellowship, at least to me, nothing is more satisfying than helping someone other than yourself. Yes. Nothing is more satisfying than helping someone realize their maximum potential. It's amazing how something so small and simple can make the biggest impact on someone's day or even on their lives. Because it doesn't feel good, y'all, when you Break up someone's day just by yeah. saying hello. Yeah. yeah, amen. Doesn't it feel good when you can turn someone's frown upside down just by asking how they are? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Doesn't it bring you joy when you have some encouraging words that can have such an impact that it changes someone's view and perspective of their current situation? Yeah. Yes. Because to be honest, no matter how well our lives are going, no matter how well we feel the plans for our lives are, no matter how well we feel that we are playing this game of life, there will definitely come a season and a time in all of our lives mm -hmm. where all we really need to hear is an encouraging word. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, there will come a time if it hasn't happened already, though, where cliches just simply won't cut it. Mm -hmm. right. There will come a time where certain songs, even though the music ministry is bombed together so real quick. Yeah. Yeah. There, there's going to come a time where certain songs won't suit you. Wow. And there will even come a time where being around friends and family won't really phase you because, to be honest, the biggest problems that we deal with in our lives, we end up dealing with internally. Right. We all deal with the pressures of life. We all deal with unexpected uncertainty. We all deal with turbulence and trouble during the timeline of our lives. And we all make some mistakes yeah. that we probably haven't fully forgiven ourselves for yet. Even in the midst of all life's uncertainty, even when we're dealing with Rough, rough realities and rough terrains, even yeah. when dealing with low points in our lives, the good news is that God always gives us unlimited opportunities and chances to get things right by giving us new mercies every single day. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Some of y'all are looking at me like, oh, young preacher, how do you know? How do you know that God gives us unlimited opportunities, J.B.? Well, I'm glad y'all asked me if that shit wrong with me real fast. Yeah. Yeah. Text, verse 11, John the Baptist is here. He's preaching about repentance. He's giving us some advice about integrity. He's telling the people, listen, integrity is done in ordinary things. Mm -hmm. Integrity in ordinary things is a true demonstration of true repentance. Mm -hmm. Repenting doesn't have to be some grandiose or impossible gesture, but instead what God does is he looks for integrity in ordinary things. Yeah. Wow. John Baptist is telling the people, listen, anyone with two shirts should share with someone who got no shirts. Uh -huh. Anyone right. who has food should share with somebody who's hungry. Yeah. Basically saying, listen, don't just look out for yourself and yeah. just watch your own yeah. 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 but make sure that the people around you are good too. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I like this, y'all, because John Baptist is conveying this message so selflessly. He's setting the tone for his message so clearly. He's sharing with the people that indeed sharing is, in fact, caring. Because yeah. Yeah. the crowd of people who are listening to him were a group of people who genuinely wanted to get right and do better. If you read verse 8, after John Baptist had explained to the crowds coming out to get baptized by him to produce fruit and keep it with repentance, the crowd then asked him in verse 10, okay, what should we do now? <laughs> Before he gives any other piece of advice, he tells them to look out for their neighbor. Yeah. And if I just put on my family cap that they gave me in third grade and use my sanctified imagination for a second, I'd like to believe mm -hmm. that the reason that John the Baptist is telling them to look out for each other it's because in order for us to get the unlimited chances that we get, in order for us to keep moving in the midst of our mistakes, in order for us to keep striving in the midst yeah. of stress, in order for us to push through the pain that life puts us through at times, that means that God, obviously, was looking out for us. And yeah. God is good enough, and God is gracious enough to look out for us, then the least we can do yeah. is look out for us. Yeah.
the last hour to see what we know that we serve God. Y'all gotta stop being so infatuated with materialistic things. 
things and just take what you're supposed to. Uh -huh. Because again, John the Baptist was trying to convey to everyone that true inner repentance is shown through your actions. Yeah, yeah. And the way we demonstrate effective change is by how we treat people, even if we live in a culture that normalizes wrong behavior. Yeah. And the same principle, the same principle, y'all, is applicable to our lives because not only do we live in some selfish times, but we live in, in some crazy times. Yeah. Yeah. It's some wild times. Yeah. Right. 
Yeah. Verse 16, verse 16 says, John answered them saying, I'll baptize you with water. But one who is more powerful than I will get ready to come. Right. The straps of whose sandals I'm not even worthy of one time. Yeah. Here he explains that the Redeemer promised by God is greater than he is. Part of this comparison involves sandals because during this time people walked on dirt roads and back then touching someone's feet was a sign of submission. Mm -hmm. yeah. John the Baptist's ministry involved baptism, which is transliterated from the Greek word baptizo, which literally means immersion or submission uh -huh. associated with cleaning. Yeah. Yeah. John the Baptist is responding to those who wonder if he is the Messiah or the promised one that was predicted by the Old Testament prophets. Uh -huh. But John the Baptist quickly puts, quickly puts all that to rest by saying, listen, someone more powerful than I is going yeah. to come. Uh -huh. yeah. J.P. Greenman, somebody who sneakers, I can't even lay something. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. John the Baptist's ministry is very powerful, but he's careful to declare that he is not Christ, but he's simply a messenger of the Messiah. Yeah. His humbleness, y'all, is what really kept his ministry powerful because even though he had a resume that was boastful, he was a cop. Uh -huh. yeah. right. John the Baptist was living from birth. He had a miraculous birth. He had yeah. a prophesied destiny. He was a powerful preacher. He was a popular guy. Uh -huh. man yeah. with a great following. But even with all of those wonderful yeah. attributes, John the Baptist still managed to have a kindred with our spirit because when uh -oh. Jesus showed up, he knew that he had to sit down and be home. Uh -oh. <laughs>
that we can bring you to Christ. You can be a virtual member. You do not have to go to the building. People don't realize that the church never closed. The building was closed, yeah, yeah. but the church That's right. always stayed open. Amen. Yes. So we invite you to be a part of the body of Christ. If you're here tonight and you want to rededicate your life to Christ, if you're here tonight and this word allowed you to be able to get closer to God, we welcome you. We welcome you to come to be in the fold. We welcome you to be in the body of Christ. Is there one? Is there one who will want to come? I don't know how you can sit still after hearing a word like that. That's right. That's right. That's right. If there's none on tonight, but if there's some online, please let us know. So yes, Lord. Yes. Come on, put your hands together. Amen, amen, amen. Look at this. Yeah. Lord, send the word. Yes, Lord. That his voice will be heard. Yes. Come on, give God another hand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can you actually remain standing because we get ready to go home. I'm not going to take you too long. That word, I just want to marinate on that. Woo. I don't yes. know about you, but I'm going to listen to it again. Yes. Let me tell you a secret. This is the first time that I heard him preach. Uh -huh. I heard about him preaching. Wow. Yeah. But this is the first time that I heard him preach. Yeah. And there was a sense of comfortability yeah. in my spirit. Yeah. Because my people, you know, here in here, you know, I, I don't just let anybody grace the pulpit. I challenge them to be able to be used by the Lord. That's right. Yeah. And I'm so glad I met his spirit. Yeah, yeah. Not his physical man, yeah. but his spiritual man. Yeah. Yeah. And I need everyone who has been watching online. I need everyone who is here on tonight. And I'm so glad those of you who showed up on tonight because it gave me a sense of security to say that this is what the Lord has for tonight. Yeah. You see, you don't take a whole lot of people to do that. But when I look and I see my deacon in this chair, I look and I see my deacon chair. I look and I see my church clerk and I see my trustee chair and I see my deaconess and then I see my new Me and Purpose Partnership member back there getting ready to help us with uh, our program, our sister Robin. And I, and I look and I see our secretary here and I see our musician making sure that the music is going forth and the sound. I am proud that God will sing. Yeah. 
Father, Lord, and Savior, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, both rest of the room.